All right, in this section, we're going to talk about solving equations, solving trig equations to be exact. But before we do that, I wanted to motivate this discussion or this video with a simpler example that we all know how to answer. Okay, so let's deal let's deal with this example first, and then we'll move on to trig equations in a second. So we need to solve x squared minus three is equal to six, and we have there's a few techniques we have for doing that. One of them is to um, do it algebraically. And we have algebraic techniques to solve this. So I think adding 3 would be the move at this moment. Now I have x squared is equal to 9. And here, the standard textbook move would be to square root both sides. But remember that when you introduce a square root into an equation, you need to consider its positive and negative values. So we get x is equal to positive the square root of 9, which is a positive 3, or a negative 3. OK, so I just want to locate where those are in our number line. Right here's a number line. And our answers are negative 3 and 3. Now, often when you're told to solve, for an, solve an equation for x, you're actually implied in the question is find all the answers that work. Find all the x values that work. So in this case, 3 and negative 3 are all the x values that work. And we state them, and then we move on. However, questions could be a little more specific if they wanted to. For instance, if I asked you to solve for x, and then afterwards I said, on the interval 0 to 10. In other words, only give me the answers that work that are between 0 and 10, inclu 10 inclusive. Well, if that's the case, one of these answers up here no longer applies. And I think you can figure out which one it is. Negative 3 is not, right, here is 0, and we have 10 out here. The only one that falls in between those two is 3. So that changes our answer. We're just going to give 3 as our answer. In example B, we've got our interval being 4 less than or equal to x less than or equal to infinity. In other words, we only want answers that occur to the right of a 4 and on to inf x values include up to infinity. Well, there are no, I mean, we found the only two answers that only two x values that work here. And neither of them falls on the intervals 4 to infinity. So this would have no solution. So important, you know, when we ask you to solve an equation, if we stipulate where the answers can be, that's going to affect your answer, as it did in these two cases. Here, there was no stipulation. It just give all the answers. So 3 and negative 3 are appropriate. For A, only 3 was appropriate, because it was the only one that fell on the interval. And for B, none of these, neither of the two answers fell on that interval, so we would say no solution. So I want you to keep that in mind because in the next slide we have a couple of problems that te that tend to throw kids a little bit. All right. So here is an, equ an equation. Okay, it's similar uh, similar to the one we just saw in terms of what we need to find. We need to solve for x. We need to find the x values that make this true, and we have to do it without a calculator. So that kind of informs us in terms of the, the techniques we're going to use. Now, next to it, we also have where our answers can be. So let's keep that in mind when we, when we get an answer. OK, so secant of x is equal to 2. Now, unlike the previous example, we don't have any real algebraic techniques to find this answer. Like, we can't divide by the word SEC. Please don't ever do that. We have to appeal to something else. and what we have to appeal to is our, uh, our triangles that we draw in standard position. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is, if the secant of x is equal to 2, let's write that as a ratio, 2 over 1. And sometimes what I like to do is I like to change the equation a little bit to make it a little bit more familiar. If secant of x is 2 over 1, and we know that the reciprocal of secant is cosine, that would mean that the cosine of x is equal to 1 over 2. 
Okay, so that's what. So sometimes it's easier to focus on this statement rather than this one. So what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the angle or angles that when I take the cosine of them, I get an answer of one half. And so here's how we can we can view this logically. I'm going to draw in the Cartesian plane here. And I'm noting that my answer is a positive ratio. So that limits the, the quadrants where my triangle can be drawn. If, if the ratio is positive, and I'm taking the cosine of an angle and getting a positive value, well, cosine is positive in this quadrant, the first one, where they all are quadrant. I mean, where they all are positive, rather. And it's also positive in this quadrant here. Okay, so we've got two possibilities where we can draw our triangles. Now, if the cosine of this angle, let's assume that we're going to do with the top one first. We took the cosine of that angle, whatever it is, and we got 1 over 2. Well, since cosine by definition is uh, adjacent side over hypotenuse, so that would have to be the 1, that would have to be the 2, and that must be a root 3 at that point, at this point. And so now once we notice this, we actually know what this angle is. Oops, we know what this angle is right here. Right? If the sides are in these proportions, we know what triangle it is. We know what the angles are. We've seen these triangles all year so far. That must be 60 degrees. And this must be 30. So one valid answer is, you know, again, we were trying to find what that angle was. What was that angle that we took the cosine of? 60 degrees. Now, of course, we can only give our answers in radians because of the way this interval is, is noted. And so one of our answers we're going to write is pi over 3. That's 60 degrees in radians. That's one answer. So the other triangle we have to consider is this bottom one. So let's say we rotated and our terminal side is here. The cosine of the angle that we rotated is 1 over 2. So this adjacent side is still a 1. The hypotenuse would have to be a 2 and that would be a negative root 3. Forcing this angle here, the reference angle, to be 60 degrees again. And so here's where, the, where it gets tricky. Everything so far, so far so good, every, everything here. Right? We've got our, our triangle set up appropriately. However, I have to figure out how I should describe the angle of rotation. Now, I'm told here that my interval, that where I, my answers can be located, is in between 0 and 2 pi. What that means is I can't write this answer as negative 60 degrees or negative pi over 3, even though rotating negative pi over 3 would put me in this position. My angle has to be a positive angle, and it has to be less than 2 pi, or 1 rotation. So that means I must have rotated that amount. So what is that amount? Well, that's like, that's like almost a full 2 pi, except for the last 60 degrees. So we have to think for a minute, how would I get, how would I get all the way to this, this side? Going, it's like going 300 degrees, it's going 360 degrees, except for the last 60. Well, if you think about it for a minute, 300 degrees converted into radians is going to be uh, 5 pi over 3 because it's because 300 degrees is 5 times 60 degrees or 5 pi over 3. Now these are the two answers that are acceptable and that we want because they lie in, on this interval. Okay, there are infinite number of answers. If I cross this off, Right, and just ask for the answer to this, uh, the solutions. There would be infinite because every time I, for every triangle I can draw in the first quadrant, if I just rotate another 360 degrees or two pi radians, I'll have another. I'll be in the same position and I'll get the same answers. And then I can rotate two pi radians again, and then two pi radians again, and on and on and on. So there are infinite number of answers rep uh, corresponding to this triangle in addition to this one. But we only want the ones that are in between zero and two pi. Let's take a look at this one quickly. 
the cotangent of x is equal to negative root 3. So I'm going to write it as a ratio to help us. And now I'm going to write perhaps the more familiar relationship, tangent, since it's the reciprocal of cotangent. That would mean that the tangent is 1 over negative root 3. So let's find out where we would draw our triangle. Now tangent of this angle is negative, so we have to draw in, we have to find the quadrants where tangent is negative. Well again, all students take calculus. They're all positive here. Just sine is positive here, which means tangent is negative. So there's one possibility. Okay. And the other possibility, the other quadrant where tangent is negative is here. In that quadrant. Now let's see, before we fill anything out, let's see if we can let's see if we can save ourselves some work by noting where our answers need to be. Our answers need to be in between pi over two and one and pi pi radians. In other words, in between ninety degrees and one eighty degrees. So where is the quadrant that represent that is represented by angles in between ninety degrees and one eighty degrees? Well those are uh, that's this quadrant here, right? If I rotate 90 degrees, I'm here. If I rotate 180 degrees, I'm here. So the quadrant described by this notation is this one. So that's where our answers lie, which means we don't have to consider that. So the angle we rotated was that angle, and that's what we need to figure out. So here's our reference angle. We don't know what that is yet. But the tangent is 1 over negative root 3. So because tangent is opposite over adjacent, That must be a 1, that must be a negative root 3, and that must be a 2. Which forces this reference angle to be our 30 degree angle. And so now we know what this angle is. It's 150 degrees, which in radians is 5 pi over 6. So in this case, that would be the only answer. Okay, so what, um, before we leave, one thing you should note is that the technique we use to solve these without a calculator, obviously reduces to our uh, our ability to draw our 30 60 90 our 45 45 90 triangles or any angle that or any of the angles that land right on the axes we can handle those without a calculator in the next video we'll talk about ones that we would do without a calculator um, and we'll get some practice in class